Hey Mary, we're all going to the lake. You want to come hang out? No, I'd like to, but I have to go to work. Hey Mary, we're all going to brunch. You want to come with? Oh, that sounds really cool, but I have to go to work. Hey Mary, you want to go watch a movie tonight? No, I'd like to, but I have to go to work. That was a good one. Welcome everybody to another episode of Geeks and Grubs. It's your friend, your girl, your homie. <laughs> Mary Lou, a.k.a. Champagne Shawty, a.k.a. Lou Beasy, and we are going to be making a beignets today from the Princess and the Frog. I am Princess Tiana. Let's all know that. First of all, she is my favorite Disney princess. She is the only princess that has a full-time job and that seasons her food. So even though I'm not out trying to find my prince right now, I don't have time because I'm working just like Princess Tiana. She wants to have her own restaurant. I want to have my own restaurant. She lives in New Orleans. I love New Orleans. She's in the 1920s. I love hats. I am Princess Tiana. So let's start making these beignets. So what we're going to do first is we are going to get some lukewarm water. You really want the water to be roughly like maybe 115 degrees. I know, it's like, how am I gonna attempt that? Just use your pinky. Your body is usually at 98 degrees, so if it's just a little bit warmer than you, you're good. We're gonna use one packet of our dry activated yeast, and then we are also going to put in our sugar because the yeast is alive, and the yeast needs something to eat. And yeast likes sugar. And move it away. Easy peasy like a lemon squeezy. And then, on to the next one. So we're going to get two eggs. I don't know why I tried to hold it. I just wanna let that slide. Crack them right in there. And we're just gonna whisk them together ever so gently, ever so gently. And one and one fourth teaspoon of salt. And then we are also going to add in our evaporated milk. I tried making this recipe five different times. And by making this one, the one that I found out works the best is actually using lard. Something about that animal fat just does it. But if you don't want to use animal fat, it's fine. You can use shortening. And that's, that's it, and I'll just wait for 10 minutes for the yeast to rest. Okay, so after you've waited your 10 minutes for your yeast to bloom, you're gonna get your milky egg mixture. And I'm just gonna load mine right into my kitchen egg. If you don't have a kitchen egg mixer, it's cool. You can use a big ass bowl and a spoon. That works, wooden spoon, it helps. And we're gonna get our yeast mixture. Jump it right in there. Wooden spoon. Okay, so now we're gonna get three cups of bread flour. You're using a bread flour versus all purpose flour because bread flour has a higher protein content. And because it has more proteins, it allows for things to build and rise. Imagine having a house that's made out of, oh, let's use three little pigs, a house that's made out of straw. And so the straw isn't gonna hold as well as your bricks are. And it's gonna be able to build higher and higher. And that's what we're looking for. So three cups gonna go up in there. Move it down. Lock that bad boy because no me things happen and we're just gonna give a mix. I don't know all the words, it's okay. All right, that's good. Pick it up. I didn't lock it. That could have been so bad for me. Okay, then you are going to get your fat. So I'm using lard. Lard for me works a lot better. And honestly, I feel like being back in Orleans in the 1920s, there's some fat going around. You know, that's some pig fat. So we're just gonna get our lard, throw it in. Feel free to use shortening if that's what you like. Feel free to use butter if that's what you like. But for me, the lard gives it a, a, a crunch. It gives it better texture. Lock your bad boy. Mix it up. Oh yeah, it looks like a mess in here. It looks disgusting. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna put in the rest of our flour. So this should be four more cups of flour. One, two, four. So, Four cups of flour. And that's just gonna mind its own business. So now that our dough's done, we're gonna <laughs> get it all. We don't need him no more. We get our dough, we're gonna get our remaining flour. 
question mark. And we're gonna dump our dough out. Thank you, come on out, don't be scared. We're all friends here. She's still a little wet, it's fine. So, get our dough. And we're just gonna flatten it all out and we're gonna knead it. Push a little bit, turn, push, turn, push. You really, you have a shaggy mass right now, which is fine. You're trying to get to be like one homogenous mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get it. I'm gonna form him into a ball. It's a him. That was just for fun. And once you have him into a nice bowl, and he's all nice and stuck together and homogenized, and all of your flappy pieces are coming in, I'm gonna put him in a nice, well-oiled bowl. And he's done. And all we have to do is let him sit for about an hour, hour and a half, with a towel on top of him. He's covered. Okay guys, so while our dough is rising, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our sauce. So, what we're gonna do is we're making a chicory and honey sauce to put on top. What I'm doing is I am using some super, super strong coffee. I like to use chicory coffee. It's something that you could get um, pretty much at any store, like Cafe Du Monde coffee with chicory. What chicory is, it's really funny because in the 1800s, France went through a coffee shortage, which I know sounds terrible. So what they did instead is that they used chicory, which is a plant in the dandelion family. They ground it up and they used that to replicate their type of coffee because they like it. All right, so I started off with my coffee and I'm just gonna let it reduce a little bit because I want that super strong coffee chicory flavor. I'm gonna get one lemon and then just zest the outside of it. Something about that brightness of lemon just, mm, it just does it for me. Just a little. Mm -hmm, don't forget about that good stuff. Gonna get a little bit of lemon. This is like a tablespoon. And that's just gonna sit there and whisk up together. All right, next, we're gonna get our bear of honey. Oh, I'm just gonna mix it up. And I'm going to let it reduce. And I'll finish it off at the very end with a little bit more honey. But this is just gonna go behind us and it's gonna cook over there and reduce. Okay, so once you get your coffee mixture reduced, it's gonna look like a just cho dark chocolate mess. That's gonna be perfectly fine because all that flavor is intensified. So I'm gonna get even more honey. Uh-huh, honey. And you're only gonna use about two tablespoons of this. Now let's go one. Eh, it seems like two tablespoons. I'm just gonna mix all that up together. And that with our lemon. And everything is gonna be really, really, really nice. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more lemon zest. This way it'll give it a brightness, but also all of what we cooked out is now brought right back in. gonna set that right off to the side. And now let's get our dough. Okay, so now we're gonna go and check out our dough and not put that next to the fire and start one. And so it should have doubled in size. That's just a little baby one because there was a little bit of dough left and I was like, I don't wanna waste it. So it's gonna come out. That's why we oiled our pan. I'm just gonna push it out like, hey, hey baby, how's your day? And I'm just gonna roll this out. Any little air pockets that are in there, any little bits of, looks like shortening. Gonna get it together, push it out. Give them a little flip. And we want these to be roughly about an inch thick. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, then you can use a pizza cutter. I have a bench scraper. They're like at any cooking store, 99 cents. And Tiana or myself, we don't have that much time and we're saving up for our own restaurant, so every little penny counts. And you're gonna get these in, I'd say,
say about an inch and a half by one inch. Okay, so you're gonna give roughly about three inches worth of oil. I'm using just vegetable oil and you want it to be roughly at like 350 degrees. So use your thermometer, temp it. We're at 343, golly, perfect. And now I'm gonna turn it down, let it simmer. Well, let it sit and we are going to throw our little guys in. So I practice this about five different times with a whole bunch of different recipes. And I feel like if I'm gonna mess it up, it's gonna be right now. So we're gonna just say a little prayer. All right. And we're gonna drop our bad boys in. Yay! We have life! They're puffing. That one doesn't look too good. Flip, you go back over. Yeah, the rest of you look fine. And you should only throw in just a couple at a time. The more that you throw in, it's gonna bring the temperature of your oil down. If you have cold oil, they're just gonna get super greasy. If you have too hot of an oil, they're just gonna like burn to smithereens. Okay, so we have our beignets. They're all nice and plated. I'm gonna get this awesome sauce. I'm just gonna drizzle it. Saucy. So, a little bit your liking. And then I'm gonna finish it off as well with some powdered sugar. Yeah, just, I'm gonna make it rain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it rain. Oh. Oops. And that's, that's it. Most of your beignet is right there. So what I need to do is get myself nice. Coffee. And I'm just gonna try some of this. Mmm, that's so good. Cool. Alright, guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this wonderful trip to New Orleans while I was living one of my past lives. As Tiana, these beignets are phenomenal. The sauce goes perfect with it. So if you want the recipe, you can go to geeksandgrubs.com, go on ahead and follow me on Geeks and Grubs on Instagram, and you'll see more things like this. We have more things coming up next week. Thanks. Oops. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Lou Beasy make that shit look easy. easy. I'm cooking all the things that you see on your TV.